guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You know, we talked about this last week, and, uh, and I, thought, I just thought, I'm like, this would be like the perfect example to bring it back, because we did talk about the garden last week. But let me tell you something. When we talk about authority issues, we're talking about rebellion issues. And the origin of authority issues is the author of those issues. It's the author of disobedience. His name is Satan. He is the author. So anytime that you, you resist, every time you rebel, every time you go against a divine God authority, you come under the influence or the temptation of the devil. Now, I know you don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. Here's the issue with Satan. He had throne issues. He had authority issues. As a matter of fact, he had so much throne issue or authority issue with God, with the divine, come on, with the supreme authority. We're talking about Satan being Lucifer, who was the worship leader of God. He is against and rebels against the authority of God Almighty, and then he tempts one-third of the angels and convinces them that they are right too and God is wrong, and they're trying to kick God off of his authority. And how many of us see that right now in the United States? We just want to kick people that we don't like off the throne of the authority that God has given them. And so I want you to see this scripturally because you know what? This is the origin of the authority issues. And I want you to hear today clearly because you can be sitting here and be like, okay, I don't have that issue. Well, we'll see if you do or not. I want you to really get this in your spirit, get this in your heart, get this in your mind because I, be, I really believe that you'll begin to maybe find some of the issues that are in your heart. Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14 on the screens. In your Bibles if you have them. This is how... You are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Look at that. I mean, he started off right, just like many of us. We start off right, and then something happens. And he is known as the, the, the morning star. He is the morning light. In other words, man, he had so much brightness to him that he just brought so much joy to God the Father. And now look, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground you who weakened the nations. Now look at this, verse 13, and you should fill this out in your notes. For you have said in your what? For you have said where? You have said where? Okay, so, so listen to me. It, it's always going to start. It ends and it starts in your heart. For he began to think in his heart because as a man thinks in his heart, so what? So is he. And so if, if, if you have a, uh, like a itch over rebellion, if you have an itch over authority, there's something that has already been birthed in your heart concerning that that gives you an issue to respect, to honor, to love, to reverence the authority that God places over you. And yes, I'm talking about the people that are over you at your workplace. Come on, how do you view them? How do you see them? Your teachers, some of you are in high school. Others of you are in college. Do you respect them? Do you honor them? Do you reverence them? I'm talking about anyone that's over us. Your country, our nation, do you spit on it? Do you, do you get rebellious towards it? Do you talk behind its back? Or do you, do, you, do you have enough God respect that you can respect even harsh? Because remember... Honor is not what you give. It's who you are or not. You're either an honorable person or you're not. That's just the bottom line. It's not something I'm just going to give. I'm going to give you respect because, you know what, I have to give it to you. Well, that's not respect. Respect is what I give you because it's who I am. And so as you spend time with me, as you hang with me, you're going to get some respect, right? And so it's not, it's not what you give. It's who you are or, or you're not. Are you with me today? Okay, let's keep reading. He says, for you have said in your heart, I, everybody say I. I, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my what? Throne. Above the stars of God, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. 
I will be like the most high. I mean, think about it. He's all about I, 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 me, 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 my, my, mine. If you're the person that's always talking about I this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to have this, and it's me this, and it's me that, and it's me, and it's mine, mine. You know what? That is the, that is the epicenter of pride. And pride is the authority issue. It all starts with pride. Pride is a killer. Pride says, I can do it without you, God. Even I'll take it a step further. I can do it better than you, God. He's already, listen, God has already given us the structure that I talked about last week. He's given us a structure for authority, how his kingdom works. And any time that you come out of that authority, guess what? You're kicking him off the authority. Are you, are, you, are you with me? Okay, listen today. Get this in your spirit because if not, you'll get lost in this whole thing. So then I thought as I'm, as I'm, as I'm reading this verse, I thought, man, that's how, that's how Satan works in all of us. This is how he works in every single person. Pride comes in, and then all of a sudden we start having rebellion, and we start being against uh, a, a leadership, and we start being against those that God has placed over us. And then we have to remember that the author of disobedience is Satan himself. And, and here's the truth, okay? If we want to know what the devil wants to do, you need to know what the devil has done, okay? If you want to know what the devil wants to do you need to know what the devil has done and i I look at this in in the scripture because paul begins to speak to the church he begins to speak to the corinthians and he says this in second corinthians 2 11 he said lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his what devices well let me tell you something one of his greatest devices is pride it's, it's the pride, it's that ego that, 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 that gets you to say, I'm not going to listen to that. I don't need to listen to you. It's that pride that says, I don't have to do that. And, and that's, and that's the, 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 the epicenter. It's, it's that pride that the enemy, he is the father of it, and he begins to use that, and he takes advantage towards us. If he can just get us in this place of pride, then he can get us in that place of disobedience and lack of submission. Look at this, First Peter. Now let's look at what the scripture says about this, okay? First Peter chapter 2, verses 13 through 25. It says, therefore... Submit yourselves to some. Okay, my bad. <laughs> that was the me version. <laughs> Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Of, of what? Of man. <laughs> of, of, you, mean, you mean my boss? <laughs> is he a man? Uh, yeah. Uh, is she a woman? Yeah. Okay, that means her. That means him. Teacher? Yeah. Uh, police, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we hate the popo. <laughs> yeah, until you need help. <laughs> then nine one one, right? So get your four one one, so you don't have to call nine one one. Amen. All right, let's keep going. Uh, now look. So he says, submit yourself to every ordinance of men for whose sake? How many Christians do I have in here? Oh, okay, then if you're, if you're a Christian, if you're someone who calls himself a son or daughter of the Most High God, then he says, you know what? Do it for God's sake. Man, for the sake of God. Don't do it for the sake of man. Do it for the sake of God. See, that changes the whole understanding of this because the reason I'm honorable, respectful, loving is for the sake of my God. Okay? And so he says this, whether to the what? The king as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of who? Evildoers. And for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God. Okay? So you want to know what the will of God is? It's for us to be submissive. It's the will of God. Now watch this. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak, for vice, but as bondservants of God. 
In other words, you know what, here's how I see it. This is how I interpret it. And, and it's true because I said this last week. When you come under God's authority, when you come under his umbrella, under his structure, it, it brings protection. But you know what it also does? It brings freedom. You know how I know that? Think about it. I already told you last week, you know, what, what's the purpose for the umbrella? Well, it protects you from the elements of rain, wind, and hail. And hell, right? <laughs> and so you're under it and it protects you, right? But it also gives you freedom because as you're walking with the umbrella, as you're walking under the umbrella, the rain is not hitting your eyes, your face, and you're just like, Ugh. so in reality, you're free. You can, and nothing bothers you. And so God's saying when you're under my structure, when you're under my authority, there's more freedom than when you're outside of it. Thank you so much. God bless the one person. Free latte, free donut, all you want. Verse 17, honor some people. Oh, that was the me version again. Okay, honor those that you like. <laughs> honor all people. It says, love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Servants, be submissive to your masters, or in other words, to those that are over you. How many have a boss at the workplace? Lift your hands. You have a boss at the workplace? Okay, he's talking to you. Dang. I don't like my boss. Okay, let's keep here. Let's keep reading. It says, so you, you, you serve, okay, submitted with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the what? Dang, that's in the Bible? I never read that. What? Huh? You thought, you thought God didn't talk about this? Well, he did. Hey, by the way, do you guys like your little umbrella? Yeah, look at it. Let's all open them up. Go like this. Come on, let's go like this. Just open it up. And then, and then just go like this. Amen. Grab your umbrella. Bust it out. Okay. And so he says, but also to the harsh, for this is commendable if because of God's conscience toward God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. For what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. Verse 21, for to this you were what? Because Christ also what? Suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow whose steps? His steps, now watch this, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd or the overseer, right, or the protector or the one who has the structure, right, of authority, who brings us protection to our souls. In other words, God has an authority structure. And, and, and it's like what I was saying once again, okay, let's, you got your little umbrella out? Okay, it's the same thing, guys. Here's the dealio. Okay, I stay under this. I, I said this last week. I'm going to say it again because you know what? I want to make sure you get this in your spirit. Okay, it would be really weird if I walked around, around Francis outside and it was pouring rain, hail falling, and I'm walking around like this down the street. You would be like, what is wrong with him, right? And I'm soaking wet, man. I'm being beat left and right by hail, and I'm still walking around with the umbrella like this. So I have the umbrella, right? I'm walking with the umbrella, but I'm not walking under the umbrella. It's like with God. I walk with God. I know about God, but I'm not under God. Hey. And so I know that Frances would see me. She'd be like, Mauricio, get under the umbrella, but why? Well, how do you feel? <laughs> Wet? <laughs> Hurt? Pain? Okay, get under the umbrella. And so 
God's structure is the same thing. God wants us to come under this umbrella for this purpose, guys. Listen to me. We, we are protected when we come under his authority because you and I, we are not tough enough. We're not bad enough. We're not bomb enough. We're not great enough to handle the, the elements and the forces and the powers that the devil brings to us because you know what when we're under his authority there's protection from all those elements those spiritual elements that we deal with that 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 suffering that the devil likes to bring let me tell you something you can handle more when you're under god and and, and here here's here's the thing too the reason i say that we're not we're not strong enough, and the purpose we need God is because God will protect us even when temptation comes because the devil will come to tempt you to be out from under his authority. And when he tempts you, when he draws you out, that's when he takes you out. That's when he trips you up. When you're far from under his authority, you get tripped up. You get funky. You get weird. You get a little cray-cray. I don't care how much word you know. I, I know people that know the word of God like crazy. I mean, they can quote verses. They can, they're in ministry. But you know what? Far from it. <laughs> they don't know how to respect. They don't know how to honor. They don't know how to submit. They've misinterpreted or reinterpreted what they feel is what God said. But God made it very clear. Listen, even with harsh people, you submit. If they're in leadership, you respect them. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them, but it doesn't mean you have to be a fool either. When you come under this, protect, this protection, God will protect you from stupid. He will. I know they say you can't fix stupid, but God can. Amen. Amen. Someone write that one down. It's a great quote. <laughs> I've never heard it said. I just said it right now. Okay, so that's the structure. Now watch this. Okay, I, I want you... I want you to, to think about this because once we come out, we get messed up, okay? We get messed up. So temptation comes when we're outside of that authority, and then we get tripped up, messed up, et cetera, et cetera. Now watch this. Look at Luke chapter 4. Look at Jesus. Jesus is about to be tempted, okay? He's about to be drawn out and get him to forfeit the very plan and purpose and call of God. Now watch this. In Luke chapter 4 verses 1 through 13 it says this. Then Jesus being filled with the who? The Holy Spirit, right? We talked about that on Wednesday night. The authority of the Holy Spirit. How many were here on Wednesday night? Okay, we talked about the authority of that. Okay? It says he returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being what? Being what? Tempted. Church, are you here this morning? Okay. Being what? Tempted. He was what? So if Jesus gets tempted, who do you think you are? We're telling Jesus. He was being tempted for how many days? 40 days. Can you imagine being tempted for 40 straight days? The temptation to not serve God, the temptation to doubt God, the temptation to, to, to be angry at God, the temptation. That's, that's the devil right there. That's what he comes to do. He comes to trip you up, mess you up, right? But watch this. So he's tempted for 40 days by who? Okay. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was what? Hungry. Okay, so he had a need. And it says, and the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him saying, it is written. Everybody say, it is written. Okay, man shall not live by bread. In other words, he is quoting the Bible, guys. He's quoting everything that was written in the Old Testament. And he says, it is written for man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's what I was saying last week. What if the word governed our lives? You see, if the word doesn't govern your life, you have an authority issue. Put it this way, if you ever have to question this, like, have you ever heard someone say this, well, uh, and I'll just say it because I've, I've, I've experienced it, all right, so, so what you're saying is when I'm sharing faith, my faith with people, so what you're saying is, so if I don't start, like, I have to stop smoking this bud in order to serve God? I'm like, well, if you have to say that, then you probably know why. In other words, if you have to ask the question, 
it's already convicting you that you shouldn't. Submission issues. Uh, yeah, thank you. And so, and we can keep going with all the questions, right? Like, okay, so you're telling me that we can, so I can't live with my girlfriend or live with my boyfriend and, 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 and serve God? Like, I, I'm not, am I, like, can I keep fornicating? And I mean, I love God. Well, if you're asking the question, then you already know it's wrong. Because why would you ask something that you're so concerned about unless you already knew that it was wrong? Authority issue. Okay, we'll just keep going. Some of you got lost on that one. Okay, here we go. Verse four, but Jesus answered to him and saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taking him up, come on, he is, he is, He's stepping up the temptation and he's taking him up high on a mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. In other words, man, Satan was like, hey, listen, I'm going to give you everything. And the devil said to him, all this, author everybody say authority. <laughs> in other words, he was trying to get him to, see, there is, there is a dark authority and there's a God authority. And that's where he trips you up. Where many times where you're kicking against the authority, not realizing that you're under his authority, Satan's authority. Because Satan's authority is all about, you know, bringing people down, right? Uh, uh, gossiping about people, slandering people, uh, getting people on your agenda instead of God's agenda. That, see, that, that's, that's, that's Satan's authority. He doesn't divide himself. Jesus made it very clear that, 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 that a, a house divided is not going to do what? It's not going to stand. So God's not, he, he, he's not ADD. You know what I'm saying? When he says something, he means it. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't change his mind about something. And if you're feeling a little queasy right now, squirmy, that's because it's hitting you. Okay, let's keep going. I told you this series is going to be a little hard one for people. It's a good one, huh? I know it's going to be a little teachy for the, you know, but, but it's going to be good. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory for this has been delivered to me and I give it to you who, and whomever I wish. He says, therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it is written. Once again, he brings it back to God's authority. He brings it back. But what did God say about that? For it is written, he says, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And then he brought him to Jerusalem, and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. Now Satan is quoting the word himself. I mean, the devil knows more scripture than most Christians. That's why you should know the word. If not, you can be tricked and tripped. Know the word of God. Here, here's the why you need to know the word. See, Jesus combats the attack of temptation with the word. Satan also realizes, okay, well, I can't get him with my word, so let me get him with his own word. Another for, in other words, you can begin to make an excuse in order to benefit you to, to keep disrespecting authority. Okay, let's keep going. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. In other words, who do you think you are? Now you're trying to, now you're trying to use the word to tempt God? Not going to work. Now when the devil had ended every what? Every what? So there must have been way more than just these few temptations. We're talking about 40. This ain't 40 temptations. This is a few temptations. I think Jesus just brought up the big dogs. Worship was one of them. When you refuse to worship, you're rebelling. Why well, I got to lift my hands? Why well, I got to sing? You got an authority issue, man. That's why. You know what really bothers me is when worship people who play on bands show up late to worship in church who don't worship God in church, but they're on worship teams. Shocking. They, come on, everybody, lift your hands. Oh, but you won't lift yours. 
come on, church. Let, and we get all the little culture stuff, junk that just bothers me, irritates me. It's like, no, okay, why don't you show up to church on time? Why don't you lift your hands? Why don't you sing to God? And then you can lead people with the same God-given authority he's given you to lead. Ouch. <sighs> I love you all. <laughs> it's true. We got to come back to this. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, now, now when the devil, and trust me, if, it, if I even see our worship team do that, oh, yeah, I, I bring it. Now, now, when the devil handed every temptation, he departed from him until what? Until another opportune time. In other words, you know what? You may have got the victory now, but he'll come back again at the best opportune time to try it all over again. And so when you're under the authority of God, even at the next opportunity the devil has, because you're under his authority, God's authority, he'll protect you once again. You come out of that authority, now you're a sitting duck. And he'll get you. He'll get you. That's why we're seeing Christians on social media talking all the junk. They've already got caught. And listen, and they will use scripture like the devil did to, to go ahead and validate their actions. And it's not going to work for God. You can do that. Listen, you can trick people, but you can't trick God. Go ahead. You do your thing. Because you have a kingdom too. You can do your thing and see how far that takes you. Now, now listen. Now I want to take it a little step further, okay? So Jesus was under God's umbrella. Uh, but now here's the, everybody say fine print. Okay, because now let's talk about this. Because I don't want people to be like, see, pastor used the pulpit for his agenda. <laughs> I, got, I got you too. Okay, look at the fine print. Fine, everybody say fine print. You know the little fine print? Like, like God tells you all this, but then he gives you a little fine print? Okay, here's the, here's the fine print. It's on your notes too. The only time, the only time in which we do not, everybody say do not. Yeah, you like that one, huh? That you do not obey. Everybody say don't obey. Don't obey. Okay, don't get all happy on me now. Who do not obey authorities is when they tell us to do something that directly contradicts what God has stated in his word. Okay, so, uh, so I'm, talking to, I'm talking to everyone. Okay, so this is the only time. Everybody say the only time. Say this, the only exception. This is it. This is the only time that you don't have to, okay? However, however, let's, let's, let's also uh, realize that, that these are cases that probably don't happen all the time but even when you when you don't obey okay the authorities that are getting you okay to to contradict the word of God you still have to be humble and you still have to have a submitted attitude let me say that again you still have to be humble <laughs> humble huh and you still have to have a submitted attitude even if you don't agree you are to remain humble, and you are to have a submitted attitude. Now, let's go to the scripture. What am I talking about? Well, let's take Nebuchadnezzar. Do you guys remember the story of King Nebuchadnezzar? Now, remember, Jesus said that we are to honor the king. Okay, so King Nebuchadnezzar was, man, in the natural sense for us, in today's workplace, he would be called a jerk. He's just someone that, man, you just would not want to be under. But God still used this king called Nebuchadnezzar. Do you realize that God can still use the most wicked person on planet Earth and God can still get his agenda to move where he wants it to? And I think we forget that. Like this whole Hillary and Trump thing. Okay, fine. God gave you the free, free will choice. Go and, 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 uh, and, and pick the best candidate that you feel is best for you based on reading on their lifestyle, their past, their conduct, whatever. But... If you're complaining and also trying to be a part of this wonderful system that is set, what's wrong with you? God can use Hillary or Trump. No, no, no. And all the religious people would just get crazy. Chill out. You think God's pacing in heaven like, oh, my God. <laughs> if Hillary just, oh, my God. If Trump, oh, my God. Trump. Man, if Trump. Come on. It just shows how big your God is. Come on. But still vote. But stop being drama.
I love you. Thank you. Okay, so Nebuchadnezzar, even though he was a brutal, a brutal king, but, and, and he also destroyed a lot of the children of Israel. I'm just trying to paint a picture here, the kind of leader he was. Okay, he, he's used by God, but yet he destroyed the, the children of Israel. How is that right? Okay, but check this out, okay? But, but, uh, but among those who served the king of Babylon were four men of God. In other words, even though the wrong president was in, God also had the right team within. He had Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Think about it. So if Trump or Hillary comes in, guess what? God can still use them, and God can have people in the house. He can have a Daniel. He can have a Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. So instead of talking smack about the authorities, how about start praying for Daniels, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego to come in? Amen? And so within his, within his presidency of King Nebuchadnezzar, within his White House experience, there was four godly men inside the house. Now check this out. So he is now serving them, and they were submitted to this king until, everybody say until, until, until the king started saying, I am putting a requirement on the United States of America to worship this idol, this God that I created. And you know what Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego said? They said, no, we won't. But they still kept a righteous attitude. In other words, that's when, that's the accept, the only exception when you said, no, man. See, this is contrary to God because God already gave me a savior and his name is Jesus. That's the only exception when you can stand up against what's being required of you by leadership that's having you to contradict what God already said. That's the only exception where you can still say, you know what, like, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we won't bow down, O majesty. Look at this. Okay, Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Look at this. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him when the king said, bow down to me. He said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to talk about this anymore. In other words, hey, listen, we already told you our stand. We are under the authority of God Almighty. We serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega. We serve Jesus. So let's not talk about this anymore. He says, we might be thrown into the blazing furnace because the king said that anyone who did not bow down to the, the golden image, okay, would be thrown into a very hot furnace. I wonder how many of us would then submit. I wonder. Like, if, if being a Christian was against the law, would you be guilty? I mean, let's talk about this. I mean, because you had me, Shadrach, and Abednego. They, they were told, man, we're going to make barbecue you. You barbecue. Yeah. And they said, and you know what they said? We won't bow down. <laughs> we're not going to talk about this anymore. We're not going to kneel to your golden image. We have one God that we kneel this knee to. Okay? Now look. And so he says, but the God we serve is able to bring us out of it alive. In other words, man, God will deliver us even if you throw us in the furnace, right? That's how to everybody say faith. He says he will save us from your what? Power. From your what? Authority. He's going to save us from your authority, king. Listen, we love you. We respect you. We've honored you. We obviously serve you. Okay, but, but God's going to deliver us from your authority. But we want you to know this, your what? Your majesty. So notice that they're still respectful even though the king is a disrespectful person. Even though he's harsh, they still call him your majesty. Even if we knew that our God wouldn't save us, we still wouldn't serve your gods. We wouldn't worship the gold statue you set up. And so they stood up and firm in obedience to God to God's command, yet they spoke to the king and respect your majesty, your majesty. In other words, man, they're showing us here through scripture that, that even when you have harsh bosses, leadership, whatever it may be, you are to have a sense of such great respect that you can even say, oh, my boss. 
Thank you, son. <laughs> I don't know whose purse that was, but <laughs> wow. Can I have an usher help him, please, just to make sure all is good? Thank you. Are you guys with me? So even if your boss is a jerk, you still have to respect. Are you, are, are you listening? Okay, let me give you point number one on your notes. Write this down. We are to submit to authority when, even when, we must disobey their command. We are to submit to authority even when we must disobey their command. Once again, when do we disobey a command? Let's hear, I want to hear if you're really getting this. When do we disobey a command? When it's contrary to God's word. When it's contrary to God's word. Because today's attitude says, you can't tell me what to do. That's today's attitude. Have you ever used that term? You can't tell me what to do. Let's all say that with an attitude at the counter. Ready? One, two, three. You can't tell me what to do. Yeah, we've all said that at some point. And you know what? That's the culture. That's the attitude that we see today. But I, I, I want to show you now. Now let's just, let's just, let's just kind of define this, this, this whole disobedience and, and, and lack of submission issue, okay? Now let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew 21. Look at this. This is Jesus now talking to his disciples. And you know what? Please, I'm, I'm going through this, this series because I, I, I want us to get a good foundation. I, I need us to make sure that as a church, that when you are under his authority, you're going to see a lot of great blessings and breakthrough in your life. I know you will. And especially for those parents. You know, I showed you the video last week. You can't complain about your child being disrespectful if you're the same way at work or your country or the people that are in authority that you speak against of. You're hurting yourself. You're no different than them. It's the truth. It's the reality. Look at this, Matthew 21, verse 28. Now look at what Jesus, he starts off with a question. He says, what do you think about this? And you know what he starts talking about? He's talking about authority. He's like, what do you think about this? He says, a man had two sons. He's using an illustration. He says, he went to the first and he said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. And look at the son said, I will not, the son answered. But later, he changed his mind and he went. In other words, the, the, the son, he, that word change of mind simply means repentance. In other words, he repented and he's like, ah. Oh. He let conviction come in. He's like, oh, man, that's my dad. I got to respect him. And then he went and he did what he was supposed to do. Now watch this. Okay, because here Jesus is trying to give you the description of two types of Christians or two kinds of people. He says, and then the father went to the other son and he said to the same, he said the same thing. And the son answered, I will, sir. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Right this moment, sir. Yes, clean your room. Yes, mom. Yes, dad, right? You know, your employee or your boss comes to you and say, okay, uh, Pam, go and, and print out those reports and make sure that you have them on my desk by tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Yes, sir. Huh? <laughs> but what did he do? He didn't go. Can someone say lip service? <laughs> yes, pastor. <laughs> Yes, mom. <laughs> you know who you are. You. I won't even look at you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, you, you, come on. You know who you are. Okay. This is a tough series, man, I tell you. Okay, which of the two sons, okay, this is Jesus. Okay, everybody say Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus is asking you and me the question today. He says, okay, so Mauricio, Scott, so which of the two sons did what his father wanted? And the first, they answered, and Jesus said to them, what I'm about to tell you is true, that tax collectors and prostitutes, check this out, look, will enter the kingdom of God ahead of you. You know what he's saying? He's basically saying that someone, okay, so you're, 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 you're sanctified on 
Holy Ghost uh, steroids. And then the prostitute and tax collector is jacked up on some demon steroids. But the prostitute, the tax collector, the worst sinner comes to a place in his life where they experience the grace of God. And at first, they don't want to. They rebel against the authority, but at some point they realize that love compels me to change my life. And that love in the midst of my prostitution, my tax collecting, my drug addiction, my low life living, because I have such a love for Jesus now, because I've experienced his grace and love, I change my mind and I repent and I actually do what God wants me to do. But then you have the saved, the one who's been saved. Glory to Jesus, right? Forever. Hallelujah. And, and they don't even have the conviction to even change the way they think anymore about authority. Because you, you're so saved that you know more. You know better. And that's wrong. It's off. Bring humility back. Bring a sense of God. You know what? I don't know it all. And look. And he says, and John came to show you the right way to live. And you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. You saw this, but even then, you still didn't turn away from your sins. You saw this. You saw that, that, that God's love was so real and you still refused to respond if this is the case with most, most Christians isn't it we have great intentions we have great intentions the intentions are this yeah I'll do it I'll do it intention to do good but what happens we nod we smile with the authorities over us and we'll say things like yeah I'll do it yeah I'll be there But then we don't because it's not important to us. And when it's not important to you, you have an authority issue. Are you with me? It's called nice rebellion. That's what Christians live under. Nice rebellion. They're nice, but listen, lip service, they tell you what you want to hear, but their heart is far from actually doing it. It's far from doing it. In other words, we can be submissive in attitude, but not obedient. Then my attitude's like, yeah. Come on, we're 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 submissive in attitude, but not obedient. Point number two. Last two things, and I'm I'm gonna get us out of here. Ready? Write these down. Because here's the difference between, in this story, obedience deals with our responsive. Everybody say responsive. Okay, so obedience deals with our responsive actions towards authority. Responsive. Okay, so in other words, my boss tells me to do something. My leader tells me to do something. Those over me, my mom, my dad, my parents tell me. And you know what? Our responsive attitude is to Go into action. Now, submission, okay, submission deals with our attitude towards authority. Your attitude. You know, people can follow authority but have the nastiest attitude. I meet them all the time in church and outside of church. Nasty attitude. It happens everywhere in the world. It happens everywhere. Yeah, I'm submitted. No, you're not. Your attitude sucks, dude. No, <laughs> you're not. You have an authority issue. Yeah, even though, yes, you know what? I may be the lead pastor of Elevate Church, but you know what? Even I am submitted to someone over me. And if they say no to me, it's no. Even if I feel like, but it's the right thing to do. No. I checked my heart first, and I said, okay, all right. Why? What are they trying to do? Protect me. From who? From me. <laughs> I may not see it right now, 
But eventually I realized like, wow, they were really there to protect me the whole time. They really did care about me. They really didn't want me to fail. They have already been where I want to go. And they're, they're, they're keeping me from stupid. But some of us, when you get that no, got a bad attitude. So submission deals with our attitudes towards authority. And this is where most of us miss it. But God always looks not only at the outward of our attitude or our action, but he looks at the inward of our attitude, which is our heart. And it was just like Satan as I started with Isaiah 14. And it said, and Satan thought in his heart. And Satan thought in his heart. Everybody say, good intentions will not stand the judgment of God. They won't. But my intention was to help you. But you weren't here. <laughs> your intention may have been there, but your body wasn't. Your intention may have been to want to help me, but your attitude was far from it. And so at the end of the day, your good intentions, they don't stand against the judgment of God Almighty. That's why he says that faith without works is what? Faith. You know what stands the judgment of God? A faithful man, a faithful woman who showed her works, his works, by the deeds that he and she did. Obedience, submission. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, I thank you that as we leave today, I pray that, that we just have a greater understanding, a greater sense of, of, of respect for your word, God, as Jesus kept responding to the temptation to forfeit the authority that God had given him. He said, it is written. Father, help us to, to allow the scriptures to govern our life that we would go far from trying to allow our opinion to begin to govern our actions, our attitudes. Jesus, help us to be able to submit to your word. You're the final authority. In whatever scenario, Father, in whatever, in whatever workplace, whatever it is that we do, whether it be in the marketplace, whether it be on media, whether it be in the church, wherever, Father, we thank you that we know how to yield to you, God, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. We yield. In Jesus' name. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.